This is my city, my home. It might be your city, or like yours, where law-abiding citizens go about their business of working and providing good homes for their loved ones, and where destructive forces of crime and evil are also at work. In one way or another, we're all enmeshed by crime. We're either on the side of law and order or against it. We're all in the battle between good and evil. Just keep your hands where they are, Mr. Kennedy. I assure you, madam, you're making a mistake. I'm waiting for your friend Walter Jameson, and nothing you say will stop me. But I don't. Someone's at the front door. That must be Mr. Jameson. Let him in. Open it. Hey, Craig, I've been buzzing. Is the gimmick out? Are you Walter Jameson? Yes, I'm Jameson. At least for a little while yet. That's all I wanted to know, Mr. Jameson. Close the door, Mr. Jameson. What goes on, Craig? Close the door, Walt. Thank you. Now stand still, please. The lady wants to shoot you. What? Mr. Jameson, you are an enemy of the one beautiful thing we miserable mortals have left here on Earth. Me? Oh, but I love the flowers and the birds and the little kitties. Who is this crackpot? Mrs. Anna Collins. She wants to put an end to your newspaper career. But, but, but you phoned me to come right over, Craig. What am I, a clay pigeon? Well, she, uh... Forced you to call me at guns point, huh? Yes, you can see she's desperate. Since when do old ladies get the drop on you? I just want to find out what it's all about, Walt. Yeah, I'd like to know why she wants to kill me, too. That's enough talk. Mr. Jameson, I demand a retraction in the Evening Star of all the horrible things you've said about my friends. Your friends? I don't understand. You will. You wrote in your newspaper about the spiritual mediums. Give me the gun, Mrs. Collins. Oh. The gun, Mrs. Collins. I couldn't do it anyway, Mr. Kennedy. I know. Now you come over here and sit down and tell us all about it. Yes, Mr. Kennedy. You broke the hearts of two people who've helped me. Professor Zachary and Princess Henrietta. Professor? Princess? Why, those two phonies ought to be... Just a moment, Walt. I'm beginning to understand now. I presume you're referring to the series of newspaper articles Mr. Jameson wrote about the uh, medium rackets? I am. And they aren't, as he wrote, running a racket. I believe in the professor and the princess. That's why I was going to give them the money to build a temple. In beloved memory of my dear departed. Now you've ruined everything. Now, just a minute. Perhaps you were overcritical in your expose, Walt. Uh, I think we should hear Mrs. Collins' side of the case. Yes, Mr. Kennedy. How did you know my name? Oh, I've seen your picture in the society pages. Last week, you entertained with a huge lawn party at 10967 Bixby Drive. You're a widow, and your husband's name was William Collins, president of Consolidated Manufacturing Company. Dear William, you left me comfortably fixed. Before my husband died, bless his soul, we agreed that whoever went first would try to come back to the one living. Go on, Mrs. Collins. But William has never personally contacted me. You mean he reached you through some other person? Yes, through Martin, his nephew who lived with us. He was such a comfort. We had no children of our own. You say Martin was a comfort? Yes. The dear boy was drowned last year, a week or so after I disowned him because... because of his escapades. You said your husband contacted you through Martin? Yes. Shortly after Martin's death, I was invited to a meeting. A spiritualist meeting? Yes. And the seance was conducted by Professor Zachary and his assistant, Princess Henrietta. Do you know them very well? Oh, yes, Mr. Kennedy. Martin knew them, too. But he never paid much attention to the meetings while he was alive. What do you mean, while he was alive? Well, it was after Martin joined the spirits in the other world that he really became interested in the professor's wonderful work. Uh... 
tell me about it, Mrs. Collins. Yeah, this I gotta hear. Well, a short while after Martin passed away, Professor Zachary and Princess Henrietta called on me. They had wonderful news. Martin had gotten through to them, and the professor wanted to tell me all about it. My dear, dear Sister Collins, I bring you great news, marvelous news from beyond. Tell me quickly, Professor Zachary. Last night, while I was in my trance, a new voice came through to me. A new voice? Do not be too anxious, dear Sister Collins. I can't help it, Princess Henrietta. I understand your eagerness, Sister Collins. Last night, I talked with your nephew, Martin. Martin? Martin came through to you, dear Professor? Yes. I had quite a talk with him. But Martin never believed. He does now. Since Martin has joined the other spirits, he knows he was mistaken to scorn our great work. Tell me everything he said. We must go on to greater things, Sister Colin. But how? Martin has talked to your beloved departed husband. Rest his generous soul. They have agreed that you should build a temple in their honor to further our work. I had no idea Martin would ever be interested in the great spiritual manifestations. Tell me what he said. <clears throat> Is it something bad, Professor? I hesitate, dear Sister Collins, to mention this. But I must deliver the messages as I get them. Martin, your nephew, was very displeased. He said if you hadn't disowned him, he wouldn't have drowned. He believes I'm to blame. It is hard to face, dear Sister Collins. I sent him to his death. But he said you can make amends, Sister Collins, by donating the money to build the temple. What? You mean you do not believe me, Sister Collins? Oh, no, no. Perhaps you doubt the truth of my message. I'll prove it to you. When Martin graduated 10 years ago from high school, you gave him a wristwatch. Is that correct? Yes. He lost it. You and Martin were the only ones who knew that he lost the watch. Yes. Martin has told me where to find the watch. Behind the right-hand drawer of his old dresser in the basement. I looked in the back of that dresser drawer, Mr. Kennedy, and there was the watch. Several days later, the dear Professor and Princess Henrietta came to see me again, and we had another seance. And what do you think happened? Why, I can hardly wait. Tell me. It was wonderful. Martin spoke to me. He said he'd speak to me again. He had seen my husband. Marvelous. Why, well, I didn't know such things could be done. If you had, you wouldn't have written those horrid articles for your newspaper. I'm very sorry. It's too late to offer apologies, Mr. Jameson. I have instructed Hemingway to cancel the delivery of the Evening Star to my home. There goes a drop in circulation. Unfortunate, Walter. Uh, how far have you gone with the plans to build that temple? Everything's in readiness. The professor's making the sketches himself. I have the $200,000 available for the temple. And when are you planning to turn this money over to the professor? When Martin appears to me. The professor says it will be soon. Kennedy talking. Mrs. Collins? Uh, just a moment, please. Your butler wishes to speak to you. How on earth does he know I'm here? I'm sorry to bother you, Mrs. Collins, but Professor Zachary called. He wants to see you. Fine, fine. Let's see. 747 Flower. Apartment 408, I must visit the professor at once. I, uh, I wouldn't tell him about this little visit. Uh, no use disturbing him. Yes, you're right. I'd like to uh, attend one of your meetings, Mrs. Collins. All right. I'll arrange a seance with the professor tomorrow night at my home. Say at 8? I'll be there. Hello? Yeah, yeah, I phoned her. I'm working as fast as I can. Those newspaper articles didn't do us any good. Do you want to land us in jail? Look, I've got to have some cash, Professor. 
When will you see her? Take it easy. You ruin everything. What? Martin wants to talk to you. Hello, sweetheart. Hello, honey. You miss me? That's good. Look, I just told the professor to work a little faster. We're doing the best we can. <laughs> I'll see you later, sweetheart. Better see who it is. Mrs. Henrietta, I'm so glad to see you. Thank you, Sister Collins. And dear, dear Professor Zachary. I had to get in touch with you. I'm delighted. Please be seated. Thank you. Things on the other side are in a turmoil. Martin is angry and disappointed. Oh, Professor, we must contact him at once. I assure you, there won't be any more of those silly newspaper stories. How do you know that? I took care of that smart reporter. <clears throat> and I met a gentleman who's interested in our work. Yes, yes, of course, Sister Collins. The gentleman, who is he? His name's Kennedy. You know, we must be careful when we divulge the secrets of our great work of love. Tell you what, both of you pack up and come over to my home, be my guests. That would be lovely. And we can have a seance tomorrow night. I hope Martin isn't too angry with me, and he will appear. He will. Splendid. And Mr. Kennedy will be there to see it, too. Check. Yeah. Nothing on the girl you call Princess Henrietta. However, there's plenty on Professor Zachary. Mm. Professor Adam Zachary, age 35, juggler, card tricks. Uh, Vaudeville performer, three arrests for operating seance parlor and one for swindling. <laughs> Anything more? Yes, yes, he's available for comedy dinner speeches for a reasonable fee. <laughs> <laughs> Martin Collins, age 28, when drowned in wreck, body unrecovered, arrested twice for disorderly conduct. His aunt, Mrs. William Collins, paid fine. Hmm, seems this young man got around, engaged twice to showgirls. One engagement ended in a free-for-all fight in a nightclub. Mrs. Collins pay for that, too? Yeah, to the tune of $3,432.63. That was the bill for uh, renovating the nightclub. And, oh, this gun is registered to her late husband. That crackpot Mrs. Collins tried to shoot me, and Craig was going to let her do it. Walt, the firing pin is missing, and it wasn't loaded anyway. What? That's right. I'm afraid Mrs. Collins doesn't know a gun should be loaded to kill reporters. Well, what do you make of it, Kennedy? Several aspects of this case interest me very much. The professor and the princess have made Mrs. Collins feel responsible for her nephew's death by playing on her guilt complex. That sure is an old trick. What else, Kennedy? This watch that Mrs. Collins so mysteriously found. What about it? The dear lady forgot it. According to the serial number, it couldn't have been given to Martin 10 years ago. It was only made last year. We still don't have enough evidence to bring him in. Yes, I know. I got it. The guy's body was never found. The phony watch. The nephew could still be alive. Bright boy, we're way ahead of you. Keep quiet, will you? You know, Inspector, I might get the evidence we need at that seance tonight. <laughs> have a good time, Craig. Don't get scared and they turn off the lights. I won't, Walt. Unless I really meet Martin's spirit face to face. I suppose you've been with the family a long time, Hemingway. Oh, yes, sir. I was serving here years before the master died. Then you knew Martin? Yes, sir. Too bad he drowned. Forgive me, sir, if I cannot share your sympathy. Oh? He was a scoundrel, sir. Two days before his death, Mrs. Collins changed her will and cut him off without a cent. Because of his uh, escapades? Yes, sir. By the way, Hemingway, did Mrs. Collins tell you she was coming to see me today? I always know where Madame is going. Can I get you anything else, sir? No, thanks. Madame will be down presently. She was delayed seeing after the comforts of her guests. Guests? Yes, sir. Professor Zachary and Princess Henrietta. 
Frankly, uh, Hemingway, what do you think of Professor Zachary's spiritualism? I'd rather not say. He's a what? A criminologist. His full name's Craig Kennedy. Watch your step, Professor. Stop worrying. Nothing will get in my way. That 200,000 is as good as in our hands right now. I'm sorry to keep you waiting, Sister Collins. I have the grandest news. Mr. Kennedy has been telling me about his experiences with the spirit world. Indeed. How interesting. Of course, I haven't been as fortunate as you, Professor Zachary. Why, Mr. Kennedy, once in Philadelphia... Uh, I'm sure the gentleman would not be interested. Oh, but I am keenly interested. I can feel vibrations all about us, Professor. Yes, my dear. There are vibrations about us, but not very good ones. You mean you cannot make the contact? Oh, this is dreadful. I'm so unhappy. Try, please try, Professor. My pilot spirit will not work when we have disturbing thoughts with us. Oh, dear. I must talk with Martin. I think I'd better be leaving, Mrs. Collins. I seem to be the disturbing uh, vibration. Oh, no, Mr. Kennedy. Why, you're one of us. The gentleman is right. He is disturbing the vibrations. I'm sure he wouldn't want to hinder your happiness. Certainly not, Professor. Well, I'll have Hemingway get your hat. I hate to see you leave, Mr. Kennedy. I have some work to do anyway. Mr. Kennedy's leaving. Good night, Princess. Good night, Professor. Good night, sir. The next time we meet, I hope atmospheric conditions will be better. Thanks for your hospitality, Mrs. Collins. It was wonderful having you, Mr. Kennedy. You tell that Mr. Jameson no more newspaper stories. I'll see that he gets your uh, message. Good night, Hemingway. What's the matter? Well, you're not really leaving, sir. Of course. Well, I thought, begging your pardon, sir, being a criminologist, that at least you'd stay here to protect Mrs. Collins. Well, you're here, aren't you? And nothing can happen tonight, except perhaps a harmless meeting with the spirits. Yes, you're quite right, sir. And the banks don't open till tomorrow morning. Mrs. Collins can't give them any money before then. <laughs> you know, Hemingway, if you ever decide to leave this type of work, I'll introduce you to a good friend of mine. You'd make a fine detective. Oh, thank you, sir. And uh, good night. Do you have my telephone number? Uh, yes, sir. Oh, by the way, uh, would you give this watch to Mrs. Collins? Uh, yes, sir. Call me tomorrow morning at 10. Good night, sir. Good night. Martin says he will appear to you tomorrow if we carry out his wishes and if we do not tell a soul. Yes, yes. We'll do exactly as he wishes. All is well in the spirit world now. I'm exhausted. I must get some rest. Excuse me, madame. Oh, Hemingway, I was just going to ring for you. The dear professor is weak. Prepare him a cup of tea. Uh, begging your pardon, madame. Uh, did you misplace this? Martin's watch. It's precious. I'll lock it in the safe. Do you still care for tea, sir? Huh? Oh, uh, no thank you, Hemingway. But I do feel that I could use something, say, <clears throat> a little stronger to steady my nerves. I'll bring you two glasses, sir. I wonder when the faker will make a move to get his hands on that $200,000. Our good friend Hemingway will keep us posted on that. He's supposed to call me at 10 o'clock. Why, it's after 10 now. Maybe you ought to call him. Good idea, Inspector. You know, I rather like that, Butler. Craig says that Hemingway would make a good detective. That's funny. He told me he'd make a good newspaper reporter. Well? No answer at the Collins home. Let's get over there. The happiest moment of your life draws near, Sister Collins. Yes, I'm ready. You are about to see and hear your dearly departed nephew. But do not be sad. Be happy, for he brings you good cheer. Close your eyes, dear Sister Collins, and concentrate. I'm so glad the vibrations are better here than at my home. 
Ah, yes, the spirits from the other side are ready. But Sister Collins, are you ready? Did you bring the money for the temple? Land sakes, no, Professor. It's home. What? You mean you didn't bring the money? Is something wrong? Wrong? Dear Sister Collins, I cannot disappoint the spirits again. How could you do this to our wonderful, wonderful little spirits? I cannot go on with the seance. But good gracious, Professor, you didn't tell me to bring the money with me. We could go to the house and get it. Yes, yes, we could. Please do. I suppose we would not be disturbed there. Peace and tranquility should reign in the Collins household by now. What about the Ostge? The Ostge will have to get there the best way he can. Who's Ostge? Uh, just an affectionate term for our little spirit, Sister Collins. Uh, we shall go to your home. Good. Excuse us for just a moment while we change. Yes, certainly. No sign of Mrs. Collins or the butler. I drew a blank, too. Any signs of struggle? No, not even a rug out of place. Hmm. 747 Flower Street, apartment 408. <laughs> Another blank. This place is empty, too. Don't be too sure. Let's look around. I wonder what happened to Hemingway. I can't find him anywhere. But I have the money, dear Professor. <clears throat> fine, fine, Sister Collins. Oh, you'll be all right, Hemingway. I was trying to help Mrs. Collins. She didn't even know I was here. You know where they took her? Back to the house. To get the 200,000. Oh, you go right ahead. I'll be all right. Are you sure? Yes, please hurry. Keep your eyes closed and concentrate, dear Sister Collins. If you are there and ready to make contact, speak to us, Martin. I am here and I am ready. Martin, it's you. How are you, Aunt Anna? Fine. We're ready to build the temple. I have the $200,000, too. Give it to the professor. But I was promised I could see you. Our spirit from the other world will keep his promise. If you keep yours, Sister Collins. I will. Keep your eyes closed and concentrate, Sister Collins. Open your eyes and behold. Martin. I am glad you're here, Aunt Anna. Your husband sends greetings from our world. Uncle William wants me to tell you he's glad that we're using his money to build the temple. That makes me happy, too. Aunt Anna, I want you to give the money to the dear professor. Yes, Martin. As your spirit commands, so I will do. You have kept your promise, professor. Here's your money. Up with those hands. Show's over. And there's our amateur ghost inspector. Make up and all. First come, Walt. OK, professor. You too, Princess. Nothing to worry about, Mrs. Collins. And you've saved yourself $200,000. But Martin, my nephew, I just can't believe it. Yes, I'm afraid he's very much alive. Yes, Martin knew that Mrs. Collins believed in spiritualism. After he was reported dead, he contacted the professor and the princess. And the three of them tried to swindle the old lady by playing on her guilt complex. This will be the Pulitzer Prize newspaper story of the year. Yeah, have a pickle. <laughs> and so ends the case of the amateur ghost.